Hello and welcome back to another Candidly Created video. My name is Francisco Estevez and I am the owner and founder of Candidly Created here in Denver, Colorado. We are a dance photography studio in Denver and we focus a lot on uh, working with different schools and individual clients, but today we're gonna show you the five things that we can't live without when we go on location to do our large recital school shoots. So one of the most important things that you need to take on a location shoot are lights. Um, any lights will do, but we really love the Pro Photo D2s that we use in the studio and we take them with us on location to these large recital uh, dance shoots. Um, we like the Pro Photo D2 because it offers a lot of versatility in terms of power. Uh, you can go very low or very high depending on your needs. They're also really easy to use. So if you look back here, uh, the dial is really intuitive and you're able to easily go up and down on the power. Um, and they've already got a built-in receiver. So if you buy the D2s or any Pro Photo Lite and you have a Pro Photo trigger to go along with it, it really connects uh, easily and makes that uh, process a lot easier to do when you're on location. So as I mentioned, we really like the Pro Photo with its trigger. Uh, the trigger is over here. Um, it's really quite easy to use, but uh, there is one little thing that I have uh, a grievance with it about, is that when you're uh, actually setting the power on it, you can't see what, it's, what the light is set at. You can only go up and down. Now, this is the older version of it. They've just released a new version of it where you can do that, but we do not have that yet. But it just takes a little extra step to try and figure out where you're at on power. Uh, with this particular trigger. But other than that, it works great. Um, it's, it's really easy to use uh, and it just goes on there and you just you can even turn on the lights on and off from here. Modeling lights, you can control all of that. So that's really, really great for us. So once we have the trigger and the lights set up, we actually uh, go on and set up the uh, collapsible glow uh, modifiers that we take on location with us. We really love these because they save a lot of space. Uh, they have a really nice quality of light. The build material is really great. And uh, you can adapt them to Profoto uh, with some adapters that you can just buy on Amazon. And they're really inexpensive way to put these collapsible um, modifiers on the Profoto heads. So once it's on the light, uh, it looks really great. Build quality, light quality. Um, and one of the reasons that we like to use soft boxes instead of umbrellas is because they give us a little bit more versatility in, in how we shape the light. Umbrellas are great in giving that sort of nice, even uh, look, uh, but what we like to do, especially on big shoots, is go and take two setups with us when we have two photographers. And in order to do that, we really like to keep the different uh, setups separate. And so we don't want that spill of light going on to the other setup. And so we can still get that nice quality of light by feathering this softbox or pushing it towards the subject to get a little bit more contrast while still having that separation between the two photographers shooting. Once we have the lights set up, we actually go on to uh, set up the background system. And we really like the background systems that come with the uh, telescoping background rod. Um, they're really great. They're good for the nine foot backgrounds um, that we take on location. Uh, and they're a lot more reliable than the ones that uh, sort of detach and come apart into different sections. And you know, like they're super versatile and we've never ever had an issue with them um, coming apart for, on us during a shoot. So once we have our whole background setup going, uh, we move on and we set up our camera. Now we've set it up for you just for demo, but usually we just put all this together and put it on the tripod. Uh, we really like to shoot with tripods when we're doing these large shoots. Uh, it's typically a very long day, and so hand holding can get very tiring very quickly. Um, and it just makes for a lot clearer and consistent images that you can then crop consistently after when you're uh, looking through all the images and delivering them. You always want to invest in your tripod. Uh, I've invested uh, in different types of inexpensive tripods, and I've run the gamut in terms of price. Um, it's, you know, you don't need a, a huge commercial one, but you definitely want something that's very sturdy and hefty. Uh, preferably if you can get one here with uh, the tension that can be really adjusted on two different uh, 
different tension knobs here so you can adjust it very tense or very loose or somewhere in between and then you can tighten that little extra knob to make sure that you stay there because you want to be able to move this camera but wherever you move it it stays and then that way while you're shooting it really gives you the ability to adjust easily but it also gives you the reliability of staying still uh, while you're shooting. Okay, and once you have everything set up uh, and you have your background on the background system, uh, you wanna make sure that you've brought your clamps and your gaff tape. They're really important in setting up your background. Uh, and there's a really cool way of using your clamps to keep your background from unrolling while you're shooting uh, in a really creative way. With two clamps, you wanna come in and grab the paper and the roll and then roll it so that you have the clamp and the background system there and then you clamp those two together. So it actually secures it at two points and then it really does not roll. And you can do this on both sides if you want extra security. These are some of the most forgotten items in our shoots and when we don't have them, we really miss them. So make sure you bring these along with your gaff tape. So gaff tape is really great because um, it's not reflective. It has a very strong hold uh, and you can use that to uh, just tape everything down. And if you have a white roll, it's really, really great in creating a little T mark where the dancers can go and stand, especially when you have younger dancers or even older dancers. Uh, while they're focusing on their pose, they'll move around the background and you'll have to keep telling them to move back to the center. But if you have a T there, uh, they're able to really just focus on that and then redirect themselves back to that spot every time they're resetting a pose. So those are the top five things that we bring on location for large school shoots. Uh, but we've also made uh, a little collection here of things that are optional that we really like to bring that really help us during the day and make us feel more comfortable. But as you figure out what uh, is comfortable for you and what makes your workflow better, you'll be able to add some of these things or add different things depending on what you need. So to start, uh, if you can bring a stool or find one uh, on location, that's great because it really gives you the ability to go up and down as you adjust your tripod. Um, and it also is very comfortable to be able to move around with it while you're sitting for long hours. Um, if you choose to tether, which I think I highly recommend uh, rather than shooting to a, an SD card because clients are able to see their images and sometimes that results in more sales. Uh, tethering is great, so make sure you bring your computer, a tethering uh, cable, um, and a table if you can, or find one at the shoot. Um, it's also a really great way to cut down in time after your shoot, that way you're not transferring thousands of files onto your hard drive after. They're already doing that during the shoot. Uh, next thing is bringing a wide angle lens. If you're not familiar with where you're shooting, it's really important to have a backup wide angle lens in case you have very cramped space uh, and you can't use your uh, telephoto lens on that shoot. Uh, and then the last thing, which is really super optional, is just a speaker uh, to play some music. That way it's not uh, static in the air uh, when you're shooting. That way you have something to loosen up your subjects um, and fun for you as well while you're shooting for hours on end. And then, as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Um, I love my gloves. Um, it's really great when handling all of this really heavy equipment, bringing things in and out of the car, uh, keeping my hands um, from getting too beat up. But also, there's been so many times when I've taken my wedding rings off, uh, or rings and jewelry in general, and um, I've left them somewhere. I've lost my wedding ring once before. Thankfully, I found it. But this way, I don't have to take any of that off, and I don't have to worry about placing my jewelry somewhere where I will find it later. So that does it for the top five things that we bring with us on our large uh, on-location dance shoots. For our next video, uh, we are going to come back into the studio and do some shoots with dancers again to show you a little bit more behind the scenes of how those work. Um, we're looking to have a theme to the shoot, so if you have any requests, put them in the comment section of this video and we'll make sure to take them into account when we're planning that shoot. Uh, and in the meantime, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below.